gals, and welcome to the Friday, April 12th episode of Morning Call. As y'all can tell by the uh, thumbnail, um, we had a little adventure yesterday. Uh, let's see here. Good morning, Deb. Good morning, Tony. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. We had a little adventure yesterday on National Pet Day. Our little, uh, our little homeless um, chalkboard, you know, that uh, if y'all look at the picture of her, it looks like a little kid would use his hand to clear off the chalkboard. <coughs> but um, the wife and daughter call her Harriet Harriet Tubman and uh, well on her neck is one of the brand new babies um, morning Jan good to see you hon uh, but, uh, yep, we have uh, three black tortoise shell and two blonde tortoise shell uh, brand new babies in the house. So they're not even, uh, they're not even 24 hours old yet. Um, no, no, uh, no stillborns, apparently no problem with the delivery. She went up underneath, uh, underneath my chair and had them and then um carried one of them to the box we had put out for and uh laid down and i mean she was exhausted she's not even a year old yet um she was born august last year um but um she carried the one black one over there and left the other four underneath the chair and they were just a screaming and a hollering and trying to crawl around and stuff like that. And um, I went on, picked them up and moved them over uh, into the box and uh, come back in the studio. And about an hour later, two hours later, two hours later, uh, went out and heard heard them screaming again couldn't figure out what the deal was i looked in the box mama's in the box she's feeding them but i could only count three so i started looking around and i realized we we now have names uh, at least a name for one of the blonde ones um i looked back underneath my chair one of the black ones was underneath the chair just just crawling on his little belly just as fast and as hard as he could to try to get underneath the chair towards the uh, the table beside it and um, on the other side of it. And uh, I, I, I picked him up and I put him back in the box with his mama and he latched on and started doing his little drinky thing. And I kept hearing him more screaming. So I go looking around and one of the blonde ones is clear out from underneath the chair, underneath the table, working its way towards the glider rocker, sitting on the other side of the table, just a screaming, just a, I mean, as close to walking as, as they could get with the belly still rubbing on the ground. So, apparently the little black one decided to follow the little brown one, or the little blonde one, so if the blonde one turns out to be a boy, we're going to name it Indiana. And if it turns out to be a girl, we're going to name it Laura, after Laura Croft and Indiana Jones, because the blonde one is definitely an explorer. For, him, for, for it to not even be five hours old yet, and take off crawling clear along an entire wall of the living room which is you know 15 feet um just exploring its environment yeah 
and the little black one that was following that one, um, I got a feeling uh, Shorty. Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting ready to say, Deb, is the little black one I was going to name Shorty. Um, because it's, you know, following along, being a little companion. I'm here despite spending two days reviving my dead laptop. That sucks. Aches and pains in this horrible weather. I'm well. I don't know, black one could be called shorty. Exploring or lost. And I see that's funny because, you know, they were they were straight lining. It just it I don't know why. There's nothing over because the way that wall is set up, it's right underneath our picture window. And we have the little box, styrofoam box, then the burgundy chair that they were born under. Then there's an oval table that's got a an old French Renaissance style light and a wax melter on it. And then there's the glider rocker. Then there's the front door where, you know, things for the kids and the baby after the fire were still storing for them because they don't have any storage area right now. And what they do have is filled up. But they're beeline into that front door. <laughs> Straight line. Surprised the hell out of me. So, yeah, I'm going to say exploring, honestly. I mean, the first thing I thought of is they fell out of the box and were just meowing. But Mama was meowing for them to come back, and they just kept moving away. So, but checked on them again this morning. They're all fine. They're all healthy, they're all moving around, they're all screaming, screaming and hollering. Mama actually got out of the box earlier and stretched her legs, cleaned herself up, which she wasn't able to do in such a confined space under the chair and stuff yesterday, but um, got herself all cleaned up and everything, and all five of them inside the box. Of course, I fixed the box, I closed the opening on the front, and... Uh, put an opening in the top so mama can get in and out real easy, but they can't. So, but five healthy little tortoise shell kittens on National Pet Day. So, good morning, Amy. Good to see you. Hope you're having a good day so far. Hope you had a good week. Um, got a laptop, not new, but it works. Cool. Cool. Laptops, I have two. Our Dell Latitude E6410s. Hmm. Those are good. These are, those are decent laptops. Wow. I was, uh, another wonderful day as always. Can't beat that. And it's Friday. Um, was doing some, um, looking into different video subjects, uh, yesterday and this morning, and I have ran across multiple, uh, channels that deal with history and, and things like that, that, um, they like to do the same kind of stuff that we do. Not just the history, but mysteries and, and things like that. And it seems that the powers that be are either demonetizing or not monetizing more and more history channels um, on a weekly basis. So... Hmm. I'm just really hoping that they don't, uh, they don't go after people like, um, the history guy or Santee or, or things like that. So I don't know. 
keep your fingers crossed, guys, because I still haven't found a way to monetize us. Um, and even if I do, the question is, will it stick? So, and my job sure isn't much help. This week, our schedules were actually, you know, I've always had go-in times, leave times. Um, but um, now the, the management has uh, decided they're going to cut hours every place they can. So this week, uh, starting this week, our schedule was go-in time till slow. So, yeah, um, I did check out Rumble, um, temporarily. I, I might start uploading there as well, um, just to see, matter of fact, I'll probably start with the next video that I'm, that I, uh, release, because, be honest with you, I checked with it, and with everything, with the job, with her going into labor yesterday, with, there's a lot going on, let's just put it that way, uh, after I looked into it, I completely forgot, so, as soon as this live stream is over with, I will pull it back up, and pin it to my taskbar, and um, the next video that I release, uh, I will also try out on Rumble and see how that goes. <coughs> um, during that combustion in the Old West era, internal combustion in the engine, yeah. Did you... Good morning, Sarah. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Friday this week has been a bitch. Yeah, it's been it's been bad because I worked, you know, Sunday. I was off Monday. Worked Tuesday. Work Wednesday. Worked around here Thursday, and you know, scheduled for five days. Should be twenty five hours be honest with you in the 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 two days i've worked so far i don't even have 10 hours so i don't know we have our we open it uh, we actually open the doors unlock the doors at 11 and we'll have a lunch rush from 11 to 12.30, 11 to 1, 11 to 1.30, and then crickets for like two hours. But they don't want me to hang around those two hours. They want me to clock out and save money where they can. <sighs> Once I'm all sorted out, I'll add more to rumble. Cool, 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 cool. In your state, you don't have to be minimum three-hour shifts. Oh, no. Around here, um, well, it's happened before. I, I've gone in and clocked in at, you know, got everything set up. And um, nobody showed up for the first half hour and they've just looked at me before and told me to go on clock out and go home. So hell I've, I've walked all the way to work before and been told that they didn't need me that day. And of course, you know, this week, especially really bad, they can't get a hold of me um, because my phone's off. 
because my last couple paychecks have sucked ass. So, it gets pretty bad when you, uh, it gets pretty bad when you, you work at a job and, and you're the only, the only cook that's actually certified at the job but you can't even afford to pay a $35 cell phone bill so <sighs> if I got called in I'd get four hour minimum you're lucky here yeah you don't get there is no minimum uh, morning, Ty. Hell, I saved quite a bit of money yesterday and got a lot of antique treasures. Glad to see things have changed around finally for you, bud. I really honestly am. You got rain too, Tony? Did I see Sarah pop in? Yeah, there's Sarah. I said hi to Sarah. Shoot, man, here we didn't, uh, we don't even get paid for holidays. I don't care if they're closed on those holidays. You know, you can work a whole week up until that holiday, then the whole next week after it. And you don't even get paid for holiday. You don't even get regular pay, let alone time and a half or double time or anything else. I personally, there's so many aged and single people around this town. I prefer to stay open on the holidays. At least you're getting paid for you're, you're getting paid an hourly wage. It ain't much, but I mean, you're getting paid an hourly wage, so. Um, so far, so good. This rain goes away. Aches and pains will ease off. Yeah, shift here's three hours minimum. If they send you home, they have to pay you. It's the law. Psst, we need a law like that. Um, like a cow pissing on a flat rock. Dude, it rained here all day yesterday. We got a 90% chance of rain today, which means that I'll probably go in and work two or three hours today and come home uh, because nobody wants to get out into crap. We'll have a few workers that come in from like one of the local or a couple of the local businesses right uptown. But um, like we have one power station office um uptown right across the street and down like three businesses they come they come over and get uh um lunch usually every other day or every day through the week so we'll probably get them and then we'll get our regular drinkers but that isn't going to do anything for the kitchen so yep it's going to be another one of those days um well, I got four hours, but I was also given shit to do those four hours. Uh, if we ever got a chance to talk, Drew, I'd fill you in. We'll have to do that. We'll have to do that. Rain is supposed to end this morning and then sunny, windy, warm, and getting warmer. You can come help me make crab ragoon mozzarella sticks. Oh, that sounds good. Crab ragoon mozzarella sticks. Don't tell, uh, don't, don't tell Steph about those. She loves crab and she loves mozzarella sticks. You put those two things together, that's all she'll eat. She may even stop eating pizza for that.
83 Sunday. I don't know what we're supposed to be. I was so, uh, I was so bloody busy yesterday. I didn't even, uh, didn't even look at the forecast. Oh, come on. Yep. 54 today with rain. 61 tomorrow, 72 Sunday, 73 Monday, 76 Tuesday, 70 Wednesday, and 59 on Thursday. So that's not bad, I guess. Like you, Tony, it's rain all day here. 83 Sunday sounds like a plan. I might do some sunbathing. I hope there's pictures of that. That'd be cute. You out there laying in your lounge chair, little table beside you. Drink on another table over here. Little radio set up over on this table. That'd be cute. Sunbathing in his radio room. We'll head off to work. Have a great day. You too, Jan. You take care, sweetie. We'll catch you later. I got a lot of shit to do once it's good weather. Antennas tune and erect. <laughs> he said erect coffee I quit drinking wow that's pretty cool you know I just thought about that I didn't even have a drink yesterday huh I'll be damned wonder why got me I chose that word intentionally. <laughs> I figured you probably did, you dirty old man, you. <laughs> yeah, I knew you've said that you've quit drinking, but I've quit drinking many times too, and, you know, kind of climb back up on the, climb back up on the wagon a couple times. And then I climb back off and I'll go, you know, week or a month or a couple months. I'll climb back. That wagon will come down the road. I'll climb back up on it again, circle around the block a few times, and then climb off when it passes in front of the house again. So <coughs> that's good, man. That's good. I'm proud of you for holding on to it. Alcohol, it seems, plays on my blood sugar. Well, yeah, it's got sugar in it. <laughs> they haven't made a, that I know of, they haven't made a carb-free beer yet. Now, I got to admit, when I am when I drink Bush, uh, Bush Light with uh, Sharpshooter Mark or somebody, um, Bush Light don't... Uh, don't mess with my blood sugar a lot. I mean, I can only, you know, I can maybe sit down and have, what, 8, 10, 12? Then I stop. But that's more of a choice thing than a necessity. So... Now, if I was drinking Bellhaven out of Scotland, you know, I know my favorite beer, um, I'd sit and drink it all day long, so, and it never really bothers me, except the fact that I find out just how little uh, Scott blood I still have in me, and Irish blood, um, because it likes to slap me around and call me dirty names after eight or ten of them, and, um, Things like that, but 
Oh, I don't like beer enough to research beer effects. I had found that I only like Mexican beers. Hmm. Stepson drinks Modelo. Um, so, yeah, I've had Modelo a few times. It's not bad. LOL, the Scottish beer calls you lassie now. Dude, I'll tell you what. Bellhaven. I'd be loving me some Bellhaven, and I wish that there was places around here I could get it. The 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 one place that I that was close by that I could buy it shut down because of the pandemic. They had an international uh, beer club in there, so they uh, they must have had three hundred different kinds of beer in that place from all over the world. And it was only nine miles away. Now, the only place around here that I can get it is the um, the little Gaelic pub in South Bend called Fiddler's Hearth. And that's a 45-minute trip just to go in there and, you know, to get a beer. So, yeah. Um, plus, you know, we don't have the money to go out and do that kind of stuff so but one of these days when I become independently wealthy we'll be able to go out and eat you know and get stuff um, I used to like a stout uh, I quit drinking for a little while, and then my granny passed away, and I couldn't handle it, so I drank. Yeah, I don't blame you for that. I mean, I I personally don't need someone to pass away to drink. I just have to have a day at work. Normally, I just have to have a day. Period, and uh, I can I can get right there and start drinking. <laughs> What can I say? I like I I I, I like my drinky poos. Um, I'm going to beer fest this summer. <coughs> if I was if I was going to beer fest this summer, I have it. Yummy yummy. Doer's white label to be exact. Hey everyone, taking a short editing break. It's ten thirty. PM in Sydney. How is everyone doing? Hey, Debbie. Good to see you, love. Hope you're doing well. <coughs> everything's uh, <coughs> everything's wet here. Wet and cloudy. What do you do? I don't condemn people who drink. I just don't do well with it. No, 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 and I don't blame you. I don't either. I don't condemn anybody for their actions unless their actions are knowingly wrong or they take their actions to a knowingly stupid level. Then I, I kind of have a, you know, I, I tend to blame them a little bit for knowingly going out and doing something retarded. But I mean, I, 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 what do you do? I mean, what do you do? Aquila, I sometimes have as beer, but that's once in a blue moon. Aquila, Aquila. I'm not familiar with that, Aquila. Well, I do condemn family that loses their job because they couldn't get up to go to work due to beer. Well, yeah, that. That, I, I would definitely blame them. I mean, it's nobody's fault but their own. I mean, you can't blame the bartender because you're still sitting upright and ordering beer and uh, they keep serving it to you.
No, I mean, you know, if you're sitting at home drinking and you continuously drink until, um, yeah, until you can't walk to bed, you just sleep in your chair, then that's your own fault. That's your, that's your own fault. You know, when I, when I came back from the military, cause I, you know, you guys know I started drinking in my mid teens and I stopped at 19 cold Turkey went in, done my military time, came back home and I started drinking again. But, you know, I, and I, I, I drank excessively. I'll be the first to admit I drank stupid. I never lost a job, but from the time I got off work, got home and showered, I was at the bar and I was at the bar until it closed at 3 a.m. six days a week because I had a crappy job. I had a crappy home life. I had a crappy relationship and I drank but I never lost a job over it. Nobody drinks at home, anything I can do to help Sarah. I start drinking on my own at 12. Just prayers would be appreciated. My mom would get me drunk as a toddler. Thought it was funny. Wow, and, and, and my boys would steal my dad's beer um, when they were over and, you know, at three years old, he would, he'd be watching a NASCAR race or something, get up to go to the bathroom, come back and his beer can be half empty. They would just sit there and pass it back and forth to each other and take drinks off of it until they were stumbling around and stuff. That's when my dad realized, oh, hey, wait, you may want to start setting that up out of their reach. I could drink at work. <laughs> wow. You drank till 3 a.m. and managed to work. How'd you function? Um, because my being drunk at work back in the 90s was not as bad as the people who were coming to work high and you know like i said it was crappy jobs um one of the one of the very first jobs i had when i came back was building um building pallets you know shipping pallets so you know it was operating out of somebody's barn we would build on average about a hundred pallets a day and then we would stack them and put them you know load them with a fork truck strap them all down so guys were coming to work drunk they were coming to work high they were coming to it and god only knows what they were using i mean some of these fellers these were not the kind of people you wanted to hang around with off the clock let's put it that way but the boss was no different I mean he was drinking his first beer at 6 30 in the morning and God only knows what he was smoking through the day I didn't start smoking cigarettes till I was 11 dude I didn't start smoking till I was 20 I bought my first pack of cigarettes on my 20th birthday I could never drink at work, gosh. Everyone would know I'd get fired. <laughs> LOL, in my late teens and early 20s used to go from club drinking straight to work. A lot of the experience we have growing up, both good and not so good, 
has shaped us into the people we are today. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. The positives in our lives, the negatives in our lives, it, uh, it all helps to form you. It molds that clay into, into the person that we are as adults. And, you know, by the grace of God Almighty, um, it's, it, it makes you into a good person. But it also helps us to become better parents, which is, you know, where the whole do as I say, not as I did kind of thing come in with parents, I think. I just power out twice. Dude, I finally lost power in here yesterday. Um, I was sitting here doing some doing some research into um, a, uh, a video that's coming out on the 21st on uh, Cerro de los Teos Caves in Ecuador and the mystery behind them. And just all of a sudden, poof, the whole desk went out. This light was still on. The above head light was still on. I lost power to the entire desk. Um, no clue. No clue. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hey, Justin. Good to see you, bud. Hope you're doing well. I like the background. Are those bagpipes? Yes. Yes, these are my pipes that my friend from England up by the Scottish border got for me. Um, I might have to fire up a generator. What do you mean you can't be monetized? Um, I have just noticed that lately, um, what, doing my research into different videos and stuff, that a lot of, um, a, a lot of history channels are being demonetized. Uh, also channels that do more of the unsolved mystery type historical things um, are also being demonetized. Um, and no, I've, I'm, I'm well beyond, I'm well beyond the watch hours. Um, they actually sent me something like six or seven months ago to get re-monetized but all of my efforts to become monetized have failed. So, yeah, it's a little messed up. A little messed up. Thankfully, my internet is battery backed up. Yeah, really, Tony. Debbie, yeah, I think it was not charged yet. Uh, I've been downloading full five half gig Windows program. Stopping in before my workout morning. Good morning, Danny. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you. Hope everything went well yesterday. I, I waited to hear from you last night about um, the, um, the podcast. And I finally went to bed about 10 o'clock. Figured that maybe you and the missus were having um, a little one-on-one -on -one time. So I didn't want to bother you. Did not want to bother you, my friend. Oh, it pissed me off to lose it with 20% to go. Uh, yeah, I don't blame you for that. Couldn't, I couldn't work wrong. It'd be too dangerous. Um, I have to inquire with my buddy on that for you, Drew. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, yeah. Went on at 10. Tech issues are fixed. Sorry about that. No problem, bud. No problem. Like I said, I went to, I went to bed about 10. Didn't hear from you. Figured you had, uh, personal things going on I don't want to bother you was a good show interesting dude hmm. 
very cool. I'm tired too. <laughs> um, uh, my boss was okay with beer in my fridge, especially in the heat of summer. Well, it was great catching up. Later, folks. Conjure me. All right, Debbie. You have yourself a good day, hon. Get some rest. Get back to your editing. Get back to your editing, then get some rest. And uh, we'll catch you later. Uh, one could only wish for one on one time. Yeah, I'm there with you. They're they're messing with the wife's schedule as well. You know, she does the whole nighttime thing. She's got Mondays and Tuesdays off. She normally works ten to six. <coughs> On Wednesdays now they've got her working six to two. And last night she had to work four till midnight. So, you know, she was home just two and a half hours after I went to bed. I was passed out. I seen her at 5.30 this morning when I got up, laying there asleep. And she's still asleep. Normally, I talk to her in the mornings and what little bit of time we have of an evening. But, um, yeah, all messed up today. Uh, you're right, procrastination's a bitch. <laughs> Editing takes forever. Be honest with you, the research is what takes me forever. Uh, the research. I can get everything filmed on my green screen, brought back over here, and get a, get a video edited in two hours. But it's getting all my filming done, finding time when it's totally quiet. I mean, I am in a house. I am in not I am not in a soundproof room. As you guys can tell by cars going by of an evening time when the wife's off work, the fan, she has her her cousins over and they're playing cards. Uh, when my daughter's up and around and not playing a game or something on in her room, I've got all that noise feeding through the door and the wall, so I've got to pick my times carefully when I do all my filming and everything, when I'm as quiet as possible, or when the world is as quiet as possible. Uh, I used to love my weekends being during the week, kids were in school, the stores were not crowded. Yeah. I would have to agree about the research. Don't trust me about your videos. I try to find the best stuff. I try to find things that's interesting. And every video may not interest everybody. But, you know, I try to throw in a little ancient history, I try to throw in a little Old West history, I try to throw in a little Civil War history, I try to throw in a little European history, a little American history, a little entertainment history, just, you know, whatever I can find that I think is going to interest people. What can I say? How far behind am I? Am I lagging here? Nope, it says live. Huh. I'll be damned. But yeah, I, I wish I had a second camera. And, you know, once again, in the whole equipment thing, the equipment realm of doing the videos and stuff, I know that thing didn't like. in the whole equipment realm of things. Um, when I can, financially or whatever, um, 
I want to get a second camera that I can actually set up either over here or up here on this shelf pointing down to where I do all my work at so people can see just how easy it is to, to edit and film and everything and put it all together and see what programs I use and, and things like that where you don't have your little watermark up here in the corner or down here or what the hell ever. Uh, I'd love to go. If we go to get groceries Saturday morning, I should be able to send the package. Works. I've been watching. I've been watching. I hadn't heard from you. You he was going to. You had mentioned that you was going to send it when you went grocery shopping the last time but you didn't go and then you were under the weather and I of course I couldn't blame you for that man I don't feel like doing shit for anybody else, for myself let alone anybody else um, so you know I I don't blame you I just keep my eyes open and wait for the surprise so I can unwrap it we haven't been to groceries in five or six weeks you guys are pretty lucky we haven't eaten a, a complete meal in five or six weeks <laughs> So like last night, you know, we had some, uh, oh, what was it she made the other day? Oh, she made biscuits and gravy the other day. Um, and uh, we had a bunch of biscuits left over, so I put them in a, a gallon storage bag and pulled out a little, you know, two-pound pack of hamburger last night. That's all we could afford. Um but patted out a bunch of little smash burgers and threw the bit put some butter on the biscuits threw them in the oven browned them up crisp them up crisp crisped them up just a little bit and just threw little smash burgers together on those biscuits and that was dinner last night so now i'm back to work today so i'll actually be able to make one of my absolutely amazing uh, Texas burgers um, on Texas toast, of course, um, today at work. So we'll, I'll, I'll be good. I'll be back up to uh, by the time I get off work tonight. Tell you what, I didn't realize how hard it was um, running in a, a household with everything until Grandma passed away, and that you know that ad that additional money was no longer making the the insurance payment or the mortgage payment and and stuff like that, you know, because now. There's that extra 600 some odd dollars coming out each month on top of the 300 some odd dollar car payment and 200 some odd dollars a month car insurance and um, furnace payment and hot water heater payment and, you know, everything else, cat food, human food. Um, toilet paper, paper towels, paper plates. Yeah, it's how in the how in the name of God we have managed to pay out three thousand dollars a month when we only make twenty five hundred dollars a month. Um yeah that's that's insurance here man. Two hundred dollars a month is what she pays for insurance, but it's full coverage insurance. So which is stupid. 
because my mom and dad's been with State, pa State Farm for 60 years and not even my insurance on the 67 Fairlane at 16 years old was anywhere close to $200 a month. So, and they say women are cheaper than men. I don't think so. But Michigan is also a no-fault state. So, you know, or yeah, it's a no-fault state where in Indiana we have this thing called Act of God Clause. You know, if you slide on the ice and wreck your car or you hit a deer or a tree falls across the road right in front of you and you can't stop in time. In Indiana, they call that Act of God. And your insurance automatically pays. Michigan does not have Act of God Clause. So um, anything that happens... Yeah, your insurance rates are higher, and research all depends on what it is and what info I want to use. When more native, I have to make a trip, otherwise off to the library. Makes sense. Right now I'm working on a big project for the town, just have to figure out how to make it all happen. Are you still talking about the um, the log cabin for um, Calamity Jane? God, I pay 90 a month for all my vehicles. Those that have never needed to use insurance are paying for those that do. Now car insurance is based on type of car and collar. There, there We have states like that too. We have states like that. People that own a black car or a red car tend to spend more money than someone that has a green car or a white car. Because, you know, they look at red and black as being sporty colors. I know, I know, I have been to states where it don't matter if it's a Corvette, a Camaro, or a Civic, the insurance is going to be the same thing. As long as the blue book, blue book price on the car is similar. So, those that have uh, now cars just based on type type of car and color I've never filed a claim on auto or motorcycle yes I am they love the idea but I have to raise the money if I raise the money they will do it if I don't then no cabin Are they going to donate the land to you or do you have to buy the land from the city as well? I mean, you're trying to set up a, a cabin in commemoration of a famous individual from Princeton. You would think that that being the case, they would do like our museum here in town and they would get a hold of all of the founding families in the Princeton area and see if they, if those founding families would donate a tree. And what you do is you make a log, log book of each family that donated a tree and you number the end of each log in a, with a coordinating number for that log book. And you make the cabin a town project. So all of the founding families in Princeton donate the logs to build the Calamity Jane cabin. I want to buy a pea green metallic family truckster. I'm with you, Amy. I would sport... I would sport a family truckster. You better bet. Also, plus, also, if your car is listed as car theft, and how high on that list? Yes, 
Yes, if the model of the car runs a high risk of auto theft, yes, you, you definitely pay more for that one. They have an open lot they picked. That's cool. That's why I said we need to talk. I will stick with the Suburban things. Now, I said I would sport a truckster. I didn't say I would own a truckster. I, I personally, Tony, prefer Suburbans myself. Then again, I've always been into bigger vehicles, you know. I, I've told you guys, I grew up with my dad's um, 79 F-250 that sat like almost three foot off the ground. He had great big mud stomper tires on it that were 12 inches wide. And I think he paid like $200, $250 per tire um, on that thing. Great for the snow. Sucked in the rain. You tried to stop real quick. That whole truck, all four wheels would lock up on that truck and it would just slide. But I've seen heavy rains in the area and I've seen him get out, lock in the hubs and go in there and shift it into four low and drive right out in a flooded field and hook a chain to a, uh, a person that slid off the road or something and pull them right out of that field with no issue. Never seen that old truck get stuck. For uh, Big jacked up Suburbans, same way. Love me some Suburbans. Not only do you have comfortable driving, but you've got that enclosed back in. It's probably why I always liked El Camino's. Still got the comfort of a car, but you got the back end to haul in. Uh, from my understanding, they want it for tourist attraction as a landmark for her. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you don't think a log cabin museum is a tourist attraction? Especially now that we've become a tourist town. So having the family members, the, the founding family members, the original family members or descendants thereof that were around during her time period, going to each of them and saying, hey, we want to build this, um, we want to build this commemorative cabin uh, we want to decorate it inside and out the way a family cabin would have looked back in Jane's um, time period. And we think it would only be right if, you know, each family member or each family that was around back in that period would donate the logs. To help us put this thing up. That way it really means something. Because it is a town project. In commemoration of her. They would open it on Calamity Jane days. Um, I quite honestly. Would open it. Between say. Memorial Day and Labor Day each year and then have somebody like yourself, you know, sitting in there talking about um, talking about Jane, her life, her history, uh, things like that. That would also keep you busy. And I mean, I ain't talking about opening at 24 hours a day. I'm talking about opening it at like 9 o'clock in the morning till 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, um, especially on weekends. 
and letting anybody passing through town stop in, see a fire crackling in the fireplace, the old furniture, things like that. It could be difficult to get enough volunteers for that. Maybe, maybe not. might be easier to do than you think I mean you know when uh, when they built our cabin that became the museum it was originally only going to be a little what uh, two uh, three, four room two downstairs two upstairs um, cabin to only be used for the Founders Day Festival um, here and it was built what a hundred and I think it's a hundred and three now it was built in um yeah I think it's a hundred and three now it was built in 1921 and Believe it or not, they had almost every single family in town come out and help to volunteer to hewn the logs and to build the chimney and to do the interior decorating. And then it was 20 years after that. Um, yeah, 20 years after that, that it became a museum. Because so many people want to donate things from that time period that it uh, they had no choice but to make it a museum. <coughs> Everything from old cast iron to bottles to full bottles and stuff to, I mean, if you could imagine it from the 1830s when this place was originally founded, then that's what people were donating. That they were finding in their barns, their sheds, their attics, things like that. Um, but I'm trying to figure out a way to do special live stream and some fundraisers around here to raise money for the project. Yeah, the world did change. And that's a good idea, Ty. It really honestly is. It's a, it is a good idea. Um, I've got to give that some thought. There's got to be a way to raise a little excitement around Princeton and, and the neighboring area um, to get people more excited about this project. I have to think on that one. <laughs> the world changed in 2020. Boy, did it ever. Boy, did it ever. I'm open for ideas, even from Tony. Now, don't be mean to Tony. You know, he's he, he's, he, he's one of the fun ones I look forward to every day.
that was the plan. That was the plan. Hell, people don't even want to work for money. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. And the ones that do have jobs and do want to work can't. I don't know what happened to the world. I remember 40 years ago, barely, but I remember 40 years ago getting up in the morning during the summertime when, you know, most people just wanted to take off and hang out with their friends or go shoot beer cans off a of fence or whatever the case may be. You know, I remember getting up, rushing around the house at six o'clock in the morning, getting myself cleaned up, getting dressed, going to work with my dad, detailing cars all day long, meeting new people, making them happy. To me, that was everything. If I worked some mediocre, piss job where I didn't get to deal with customers and I didn't get to see their satisfaction or hear their compliments, it wasn't worth working. It's one of the reasons that I got into the food industry is, you know, I learned a good trade and even today, 40 years later, I, I cook my, I cook the food for them, whether it's a pizza or a burger or a club sandwich or a chicken sandwich or a, 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 a taco salad or whatever the case may be. And I, uh, when my, when my rush is over with, or when I'm done cooking and there's no many orders, I take off my gloves, wash my hands, dust the, the flour off my outfit, and I walk out in the dining room and I ask them, how was it? How, is there anything I can do to improve it? Did you get your belly filled up? You know, and everybody's always happy. Not had a single complaint except for one person who I made a salad for last week that didn't want onions on their salad and didn't think to add to make sure and say no onions. But she picked the onions off but ate it anyway. So no big deal. I want to go to work but kind of can't when I'm teaching four kids school lessons. Makes sense. But you're doing something with your time is the whole point. You're not just sitting around watching Price is Right and Young and the Restless and Days of Our Lives and, and getting up off the couch and, you know, half a bag of potato chips fall on the floor that had fallen on your belly and stuff while you was eating there watching TV. You're doing something. You ever looked into grants and stuff for schooling? Well, Tyler's pretty smart, too. I think he'd be good. Soap operas or Bible study. <laughs> One of the reasons I look so forward to getting up at 16 years old and going to work with my dad. Because if I didn't, I'd be stuck in a house with my mom all day watching Days of Our Lives, Young and the Restless, General Hospital. Nope. Not doing it. Then it was Jenny Jones or Geraldo or Jerry Springer or 
whatever the hell she wanted to watch in the afternoon time when General Hospital was over with. Nope. I started looking into it when I was still in Iowa, but once we moved here, I stopped. There's no amount of money that can buy what you're doing with your kids. Good words. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Sitting on the couch eating chips is doing something. <laughs> Maybe. It's getting him yelled at when Brenna gets home because he didn't clean up his mess. That's what it's doing. Soap opera is nap time shows to me. Hey, you know soap operas, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's been documented on multiple occasions. There are at least three writers on every soap opera that have got some kind of psychology degree. And now it's probably even more than that. I actually read that probably 20 years ago. That every, every company that writes soap operas, their writers, at least a, a percentage of them, have got a psychology degree. Because they know what to put in the story to get people addicted. And if you'll watch, soap operas follow trends. So, you know, back when the paranormal first started becoming a huge thing, we had the demon possession of Marlena on one of the soap operas. You know, they didn't spend a lot of money going out and buying or going out and having a suit made. They took one of the cat demon suits from Tommyknockers and... Um, used it, altered the, altered the head just a little bit, but that was the demon costume, that, or that was the costume they used for the demon whenever the demon would come out from the possession and attack somebody. crap on TV only feeds the dysfunction of society. I'll agree with that to some point. I'll agree with that to some point. There's some stuff on TV that I really enjoy. Never could stay awake. I fall asleep in seconds. That's because people like you and me are, are chiseled from different pieces of granite, dude. Uh, I don't find anything interesting about gossip or cheating or anything like that. Hell, I can just look at regular society and see that somewhere out there. I don't need to watch it on TV. Uh, Dev, yep, yep, gossip and cheating. And yep, okay, gotcha. I use a few YouTube channels that I support, put me to sleep. No, neg uh, no negative, <coughs> but are no interest. Walk around the city here, you see soap operas. Even in my teeny tiny little village, you know, I told you guys we have three thousand people around here, and that's that's our rural area, not just not just in town in the village. That's our rural area around here, and um, yeah, yep, you see people doing a, all that stuff you see on soap operas. Watch it in real life saves money. Yep. I figured out when I was 15, soap operas were a peek into what women want. Really? I don't know if it's technically what women want. I mean... Uh, letters to the editors to women's magazines were a gold mine. 
Yeah. I learned a lot from those. Which, you know, my dad, he could never... He could never see, you know, subscribing to a magazine, but my mom did. And, yeah, you know, when you're... When you're a 15-year-old boy and... You know, woman's life or something like that is the only thing laying around and you're bored. At least until I discovered National Geographics. And there's where my interest of the world and history and everything else came in, so... Soaps were just live versions of Harlequin. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep, and my my mom, she never, um, she never got a uh, went out and bought Harlequin romance books. But my aunts would give them to her, and so once again, the Holy Grail of what women want, romance, travel, adventure, romance, money, Fabio, it's kind of funny, women back in the, women back in the 80s wanted Fabio, women now want Jason Momoa, laughing I do believe it I was in the hospital for a long while when I was 15 read everything in the place eventually getting to women's magazines <laughs> no nah, my mom passed on fat boy fat fab boy not my wife <laughs> she could be in the middle of a conversation and every time I'd turn my eyes away to look at something she'll say I'm talking to you but you let him come on TV and all of a sudden the room gets silent it's like hey I got everything he's got. I'm lying, but I mean, you know, it makes her look at me for a second. <laughs> Don't necessarily enjoy the look that I get, but I mean, it makes her look at me for a second. At the end of the day, that shit made me very shitty little prick when I was in my teens. I could never imagine that, Tony. I really couldn't. No, no, she don't watch soaps. I meant, you know, when Jason Momoa comes on TV. No, she don't watch soaps. My God, man. You know my wife, murder mysteries. How did they do it and get away with it? I still think she's using it as a study guide for when she's finally tired of me. You know, how to get away with it and not get caught. You know, cold cases, missing persons. Um, and then, of course, you know, she has those reality shows that she watches. Um like me okay thank god she gained her cool points back <laughs> Shoot, man, my wife watched soap operas. Are you kidding? 
my my wife would much rather watch some cold case from before she was even born that they're still trying to solve or that they've reopened or something like that. Now, the ones that really strike her fancy are the cold cases that, you know, they had open for a decade or whatever, couldn't solve them, put the, put the lid on the box and reopened them in recent years and retested all the evidence, done DNA testing and stuff like that, and finally solved the crime after 40 years of it laying there collecting dust. Those are the ones that really strike her fancy. Those and the, how did, how did she get away with it for so long and never get caught kind of instructional videos. I did watch when I was in the hospital, saw Luke and Laura's wedding. <laughs> General Hospital, but I was, re but it was research by that point. <laughs> like sand through the hourglass, so are the days of our Yep, I remember General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, Young and the Restless, Guiding Light. Those are memories I wish I didn't have. Dark Shadows was the best fucking soap ever. There you go. I liked Dark Shadows. I liked um, Tales from the Dark Side. Um, God, what else? The Outer Limits. Um, Twilight Zone. Those are the kind of things I got into. The spooky things, the mysteries, the the, the psychological stuff. That, that was the things that I got into. And yes, it was a soap. It came on at 2 p.m. or 2.30. Oh, I remember. I remember when we watched the movie uh, one evening, Grandma actually, you know, came in and watched it with us, and she remembered watching Dark Shadows when it was on television. So, yeah. Followed by Captain Jinx. The kids got home. <laughs> yep. Gotta love those kids shows. Then again, my dad was evidence of that. We'd get up on, on Saturday morning and mom would go to the kitchen. My sister and I would go in front of the TV in the living room turn on our Saturday morning stuff. The old man would go out, pour a cup of coffee, come in, sit down in his chair and not move until like one o'clock in the afternoon when all the cartoons and the TV shows were over with. To watch the TV version is campy as hell today, but back then it was all, oh yeah. Oh yeah, believe me, I know, I've, I've, I've watched it, I remember. Hell, to watch any of those old shows, you know, like, you know, Dark Shadows or something like that, 
you know, to look at them today and to see, you know, the same genre of, of that type today versus back then. It, it does. It, it seems very campy, very cheap. It's like, oh, my God, I have no money and I could make that here. I could film that on my phone and make it look better than that. In the movie, Barnabas was a dork. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, look who was playing him. Look how they, look how they, you know, scripted him in. Of course, I think he was supposed to be a dork. The TV barn was the man. Or vampire. Yeah. But I mean, seriously, though, if you sit and look at any of those old shows, um, the old 60s Adams Family and stuff like that, or the Munsters, or anything like that, and you look at it today, with the uh, the technology we have the special effects the green screens things like that they're they're all so campy batman you know yeah, um i re i remember the old spider-man movies and captain america movies that would come on tv and and you look at the marvel universe today with special effects and 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 stuff like that and it's just it's nowhere near nowhere near yep you're right biff bam pow kaboom zonko doink Definitely not what it is today, that's for sure. You know, those writers were freaking stoned. <laughs> <coughs> Um, yeah. Time for me to get on with my day. It was great chat this morning with everyone. Be good to one another. Be good to yourself. Amy, darling, you have a wonderful day. You take care. Good having you in here this morning. Um, <clears throat> have yourself a wonderful, wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope it's dry and at least somewhat warm for you. And we'll catch you Monday morning. Same fat time, same fat station. Yeah, I've only got a little bit of time. Till I got to get on with my day too. Get ready to get back to it. And dig out my duster because it's rainproof. And it's just a crappy, steady, hard mist. But at least it's 50 some odd degrees. So we'll see you later, darling. You know, there's a real issue with losing my laptop. So all my accounts is attached to that one machine. Oh no, see, that sucks.
Wow, this thing has filled up. Drizzle. Ninety <sighs> percent chance of rain all day. Go figure. I spent three hours trying to get into my Microsoft account. I feel I lost many little bids and picks, etc. I need, so I have to start from scratch. That's terrible. And see, I thought that happened to me last night. So I was playing a game on my phone after the wife went to work, watching TV. And as this crappy phone normally does, it just shut down on me. And then it shut down completely. And then it wanted to restart. And when it restarted, it said phone ready to set up. No content available. And I almost peed on myself because I got irreplaceable pictures of these kittens. I've got the granddaughter on there. I've got uh, birthdays. I've got grandma. I've got all kinds of stuff that it was telling me wasn't there. And after about 10 minutes, all of a sudden, the screen came on and my wallpaper came on and everything was there. Crappiest phone ever had in my life. This phone is crappier than the original cell phones that, that I had back in the 90s. Anything that goes through Google, I have a password manager backed up on the storage. I think I can get data off old laptop, but it's going to cost me, so we'll wait. All but for Microsoft, Amazon, and the bank. I don't blame you for that. I wouldn't have any of that shit backed up on there. I don't even, uh, you know, way, way, way back when... I could afford to order the things I needed off of Google or eBay or whatever. I didn't even keep my my uh, debit card um, anywhere. And, and as soon as I was done with my transaction, I cleaned it. I made sure that I don't leave any banking stuff on there. We do not bank by 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 computer. None of our banking information is on there. Look at Google if you use it. They hold a lot of stuff on their cloud. I never use Google to keep stuff. Many hassles. Too many hassles of hackers. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, but they save stuff without request. Oh. Yeah, see, that that's the thing that always gets me, you know, when they, uh, when you do stuff online, it says, would you like to save these passwords for future use? And, you know, uh, the F no button can't come fast enough for me. I've got all my I've got all my passwords written down right here. I know what they all are and well no, I'm not saving shit online. <laughs> I don't save debit card numbers, I don't save 
none of that every single time that i would that i would log on to buy something it was like i was a brand new customer for the first time again then buy backup drive and set up to save everything that you save on both. That is how I do not lose personal stuff in crashes. I save on two drives beside the laptop. Then buy a backup drive. Um, nah. Number one, I can't afford to pay for attention right now. And number two, um, nah. If I'm going to buy anything, it's going to be a new computer. Um, so I quit using all this crappy, not working stuff. I beta tested from Microsoft, which is where that backup got started. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Oh, 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 that reminds me. I bought a complete version of Windows for 10 bucks. Wow. I'm still listed as a beta tester. <laughs> Ask them where the hell your paycheck is that comes in every month then. If you're still listed as a beta tester, find out why you're not getting paid for your beta. So I still get the discount. I mean, a discount is good. There's nothing wrong with getting a discount when you're doing something. My pay was in free Windows related software. Okay. I mean, I... I, I couldn't do that. I mean, I would want a pay that I could get new camera equipment with, a new computer, new microphones, cool shit, you know, my proton pack to go with my Ghostbuster outfit so I don't feel like a 10-year-old walking around in the the half-size toy proton pack when I do things with Danny and the Ghostbuster crew. You know, cool things, guns, my, my, uh, my, 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 my single action, uh, my, my single action six shooters to go on my side, things like that. I got the little hardware like fingerprint scanners. I'd have them, but then I wouldn't know what to do with them or how to hook them up or anything. You know, I would love to have locks on my door that are fingerprint scanned. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I'd, even, I'd even hook up a fingerprint scanner to the wife's uh, car so no one could steal it. If I had cool shit like that, but I wouldn't know how. I mean, what good is technology when you're a technotard? I got a discount on a couple antiques yesterday because I told them I was going to use them for reenactments. Very cool. That's cool.
they have a cool USB and no more login password crap. That's a good point. Never use fingerprint scanners. They're easy to hack and get prints. Yeah, I've heard of people using like tape. Um, if you don't, you know, tss, 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 clean off the, the, the scanning window each and every time. Um, I heard they're, they're, uh, I've heard of people using tape before or um just putting a little bit of uh a little bit of baking soda or stuff on the window and then um using it to lift a print these were only for computer management because your print is stored in a data file microsoft related logins oh okay that makes that makes sense Worst places on your cell. Hell, the cops have my fingerprints. Feds, too. They still have mine from when I worked security. Because I worked security at a international industrial complex. So, you know, I had to use my fingerprints a lot of times to uh, log in and out of um, the computers in certain buildings and stuff what I went in to do um, visual uh, searches so yeah you know all of my stuff is yeah it's out there I did like beta testing for Microsoft I got access to some of the very early stuff Huh. Very cool. I used to know a guy that um, back when like Street Fighter and stuff was just starting to get really popular. He tested um, video games. And, you know, they would always send these brand new video games to him. He'd, he'd play the whole game. And he would send them his views on things. And he made good money doing that. I mean, never in my life ever met anybody that, you know, sits around playing video games from 7 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night and made decent money until I started meeting influencers on youtube and stuff that do game reviews so yeah I'm... smart dude man smart dude princeton has my prints from seven years ago i have fingerprint scanner on this laptop but won't use it microsoft made a Made a what? It's behind that heart. Made uh, stuff meant for intelligent uses. This phone has got a fingerprint scanner on it. But I won't, uh, I don't use it. I don't keep anything on there that I don't want anyone to see, so I don't have a lock on it or anything. No passcode, no retinal scan. No face scan, no fingerprint scan, nothing. Then again, that phone is so incredibly crappy that my luck, I would scan something on it and all of a sudden it's sent out all over the world. And, or it tried to tell me that I'm not me. So, yeah. like how to grab any cell data within a certain distance. <coughs> I 
and that's without their Bluetooth turned on. If you just happen to walk by somebody um, that's Bluetooth to a speaker or something and started scanning, can you imagine what you could find on a Bluetooth link? never looked into that sort of thing but it was interesting that is without the phone being on ooh, 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 look at that that's cool I need a night vision filter See if you can pull some strings on that one, Tony. I need a night vision filter that will lock onto my phone. You know, just one of them Microsoft thingies that clips on the top of your phone and goes over your camera. <coughs> or a FLIR. I could always use a FLIR. You know infrared that sort of shit requires hardware I did not have I have night vision on my camera and IR as well Microsoft don't really deal with hardware. That's uh, that's something I've been wanting to get anyway. You know, for our investigations is is a FLIR. Um, only because of the infrared and and the night vision capabilities on it. But I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on a FLIR camera. Um, I don't even have five hundred dollars to to burn on a attachment that, that plugs into your phone that has FLIR. So, you know. Oh, I did, however, and I know that, you know, maybe only one of you in here now out of who all is still in here is interested in this, but I got approached day before yesterday. Um... by the gentleman who is um, um, running for our local sheriff. And um, his girlfriend recently uh, moved in with him. And he came to me and asked me if I would mind doing an investigation of his house because she has had things come up missing. Unusual things come up missing. She went out and bought a Gatorade the other day. Brought it in, set it down on the counter in the kitchen, walked into the living room, straightened a couple things out, come back to get it, it was gone, they haven't found it yet. Only the two of them in the house. And he wasn't even there at the time. She actually accused him of sneaking home and stealing her Gatorade and leaving it they're leaving it somewhere, hiding it. He was not even home. He was out at the um, courthouse. So he stopped me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing an investigation of his home because now she's moved in and activity has, pop, has started piling back up again. So she's lost jewelry. She's lost all kinds of stuff out there since she moved back in or since she moved in. So... That's probably going to be one of our first investigations this season is going to be the uh, the candidate for county sheriff. So uh, my camera was under four hundred dollars. It has them. 
And I'll tell you what, $400 is like $4,000 to me right now. I don't know why the Microsoft cell phone did not survive. It was clearly the best of the big three. It's a good question. It's a good question. I, I, I like that old Windows phone I had. I thought it worked great for what it did. The only problem was it was not even water resistant. So like I said, I had that thing for a year before I started my first channel. And then, what, a month and a half, two months into that first channel, we got stuck in that downpour. And I actually had it inside a leather bag. But it picked up enough moisture from the rain going on outside the tent that it quit working. And, and never worked again. If you were a Windows user... Morning, Ian. Good to see you, bud. Hope you're doing well this morning. I had mine till support died. <laughs> mine was great. It was easy to use. It was easy to access stuff. The cameras were good on it. The video was good on it. Uh, everything. Everything was good on it. Never liked Windows cells, huh? Yeah, that one I had, man. It was it was a great little it was a great little phone. I really I really used it a lot. I could use it directly with my PC. Just woke up and got some coffee. What are you doing sleeping so damn late, man? It's almost ten o'clock. Taking calls via the PC with no wires was cool. I bet it was. I never tried that. Am I going to have me a little bit more? Just a little bitty shot. So I got to start getting ready when uh, we end this here in a few minutes. I'm a deep sleeper. <laughs> when you're not in deep doo-doo, you're a deep sleeper. Like I said, beta tested stuff for them. I have about two hours before I get ready. <laughs> I got to start getting ready in about six and a half minutes. I got to head out shortly after that. Yo, yo, head. What can I say? Oh, my goodness gracious. Can't help but wonder what the weekend has in store. Looks like it's going to be a little bit warmer. Hopefully a little less rain. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Who knows, by Monday morning, I might just be... Back then, they were interested in testing with older PCs. We weren't in a toss the things aside every year or two. Hey, Bud Files, good to see you. Hope you're doing. Uh, hope you're doing good today. Yes, a warm yes, but nothing. But rain here. I'm sorry. It's 
Silverbrook Cemetery. I want to get back to Silverbrook this year. Uh, it's been a couple years since we were there. I want to get back to Silverbrook. There is, there's still about 95% of that place we have not investigated yet. And there's still a lot of stories uh, coming out of that place. Um, I hear stuff all the time from people asking me if we've got, if we've done Silverbrook that they have they have talked to people who have seen this or heard that or something. So I definitely want to get back to Silverbrook Cemetery here very very soon and uh, see what's going on out there. Which, you know, we've been there three times, I believe. Um, and, you know, we even have uh, cemetery workers. We've had cemetery workers get a hold of us in the past and say that they have seen and heard things back by the native mound uh, back in the uh, southeast corner of the place. So that's one place I really want to concentrate on when we go back is that mound area back there. So it ha appears that the rain has moved out of the area and I can feel it. I bet. I bet because with all this moisture and stuff in the air and this, this steady heavy mist falling here, man, I'll tell you what, my knees and my left hip my lower back are all aching this morning. So I could just imagine the relief that you're having right now. Your back and your hands. You know, it's funny. The arthritis in my hands don't really bother me a lot. Now, I can feel it like here on this hand but this hand is fine and I've got it you know this this whole area right here in this hand but this one here all I'm all I'm really feeling is the is my my uh, first finger and my middle finger so hopefully once I get into work into that hotter environment by the the grills and the 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 fryers and the pizza oven and stuff it'll at least until i leave and come back home <coughs> but it's about that time guys and girls we got less than a minute to go um, I hope you guys enjoyed the show this morning. Um, it's always fun sitting down, catching up, drinking some coffee with y'all. Um, let me see. Today is the 12th. Uh, what do we have? On the 14th, we have the infilled monster, the beginning of a legend. Or a lie from Enfield, Illinois, back in 1973. That's a real good little story. It surprised me because I've never heard of it before. Um, on uh, Tuesday the 16th, we have America's Greatest Mystery, Where Are Our People Going? Um, it's about people just vanishing. We've done the missing 411 thing before. Um, this actually pertains to that. But there are some cases mentioned in there. That it'll blow your damn mind. I'm telling you that. Um, on Thursday the 18th, we have Appalachian History, Daniel Boone and the Wild Man of the Wood. This is actually a story. This is actually a story recounted by Daniel Boone in his journals and his son's journals. And many, many folks from Kentucky have told the story for generations. A uh, real good story. 
Uh, and then, of course, on Sunday, the 21st, we have the uh, uh, Cuave de los Taos Caves in Ecuador. Uh, hell of a discovery and a perfect formation. I mean, to the point where it cannot possibly be natural. But if it's man-made, it's the greatest architectural undertaking in history so that's what we got coming up this week and next week but that's it for today guys it is after my time and i have got to get to rolling 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 but y'all have a good day have a good weekend try to stay dry try to stay warm try to stay healthy uh, God bless, God bless y'all, God bless, you know, all of us, uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, God bless you, God love you, I do, and uh, we'll see y'all on Monday, have a good day, y'all.